The F-3D-1 flies out for the U.S. Navy in War Thunder. Let's see what it's got. The development of the F-3D Sky Knight began in the late 1940s as the Navy recognized the need for an all-weather fighter to replace the aging piston-engined aircraft that were left over from the Second World War. Douglas was awarded a contract to develop the new aircraft in 1946, and the first prototype flew in early 1948, which is a very short development time for such an early jet aircraft. The new plane had two crew members seated in a side-by-side -side cockpit, which was quite unusual for a fighter at the time, and it was designed to operate radar systems that were still in development. It was eventually fitted with the AN-APQ-35 targeting system, which used two separate radar sets for scanning and tracking, as well as a small rearward-facing radar in the tail as a warning system. This radar system was incredibly advanced for its time, but was an absolute nightmare for maintenance crews, and it was estimated that over 70% of the parts needed to be replaced every year. The F-3D's primary armament was a set of four 20mm cannons. The F-3D Sky Knight entered service with the Navy in 1951, and it saw extensive use during the Korean War, where it was credited with shooting down several enemy aircraft, and it even performed the first nighttime radar intercepts of a jet by another jet, and it's one of the few aircraft to shoot down the legendary Polycarpov Po-2 biplane in air combat. The F-3D Sky Knight remained in service with the Navy after the Korean War, but it was gradually phased out in favor of more modern aircraft. The plane ended up being a fairly versatile design, and it went on to be used in the development of the Sparrow air-to-air -air missile, and it even saw service during the Vietnam War as an electronics warfare platform, carrying jammers and countermeasures to cover other aircraft. The F-3D was redesignated the F-10 in 1962, and a total of 266 Sky Knights were built. What we're looking at in War Thunder is the F-3D-1. This is incorrectly classified as a strike aircraft, and it sits in rank 5 of the U.S. air tree, with a battle rating of 7.0. It doesn't have any kind of ballistics computer, which it shouldn't, and it carries a double radar set, with both the AN-APS-21 and the AN-APG-26 units. This provides a basic scan wall track capability, along with ACM boresight targeting. This radar set is quite powerful at this BR, with reasonably good range and reliable targeting, though it's quite vulnerable to ground clutter, just like most of the other early radar sets. Notably, the F3D1 also gets the C-Scope radar display, enabled by default. Its primary armament is a set of four 20mm cannons, with a reasonably good selection of ammo belts. These guns hit pretty hard, but I've always had a lot of trouble connecting shots with the M3s, which are basically Hispano Mark Vs. But when they do hit, they tend to do significant damage even on glancing hits. For external loadouts, the F3D has one pylon under each wing that can carry a bomb or unguided rocket. Both bombs drop together, so only one shot, so to speak, when you do a bombing run. Its unguided rocket is the Tiny Tim which has a huge 67 kilogram semi-armor piercing warhead. I find the Tiny Tim difficult to get hits with, and it's not super accurate, and it has a pretty pronounced drop early in its flight profile, but if you can connect these things, they'll destroy basically any ground target in the F-3D's BR range. The Sky Knight's flight performance has a few drawbacks, but it's not terrible overall. The rate of climb is pretty weak, even at high speeds, and it's a rather heavy fighter that feels a bit underpowered most of the time. It tops out a little over 800 kilometers an hour, but it takes quite a while to get there, and generally speaking, about half of the jets it faces can outrun it under most circumstances. Where the F3D does well is in energy retention and agility. The jet is fully aerobatic, and if you can keep the speed above about 450 kilometers an hour and, like, limit max G turns, this jet can actually hold its own in a lot of one-on-one -on -one engagements. I'll admit that even though I've been flying the F3D for a long time now, 
I'm routinely surprised by its maneuverability in air combat, considering that it's a heavy jet with slightly underpowered engines. The big thing to keep in mind is that if you get sucked into turn and burn fighting, its agility will go to crap pretty quickly if you lose too much airspeed. And given its mediocre acceleration, if your opponent gets an energy advantage on you in a prolonged turn fight, you might not be able to recover. You can mitigate this a bit by using maneuvers like a high yo-yo that will allow you to retain some energy in a direction change, but it'll take some practice if you want to fly this as a brawler. Also, like most other aircraft, if you load up external weapons on its wing pylons, you're going to see a pronounced drop in flight performance, so that's something to keep in mind if you use this as a multi-role fighter. Flying the Sky Knight into air battles gives you an air spawn, since the snail has incorrectly classified this as a strike jet. Even still, its climb performance isn't very good, so if you go up for high altitude combat to try and like use its radar to hunt for bombers and stuff, you're going to need to side climb, and it'll take a bit longer to get up to altitude, so long enough that you'll probably miss intercepting the bombers. Something to consider. If you take the bombs to go out and hit bases using the air spawn, you'll usually be able to get there, but you still want to keep an eye out for enemy interceptors that are diving in on you. When you're going out into air combat, try to use boom and zoom tactics if possible, and anything you can do to limit combat to one-on-one -on -one engagements is probably a good move, as this jet isn't a very good brawler. It's a large target, and while it can often keep pace with an opponent, dealing with a two-on-one or a three-on-one is generally a lost cause, as at least one of them is probably going to be able to get an energy advantage. Now, the plane's radar set can actually be pretty useful, as it tends to lock targets relatively easily, and it gives accurate speed information and range to a target that can help plan engagements, and even its basic scanning can help find targets out beyond visual range. Flying close air support isn't really the F-3D's main strength, but it's still capable of attacking ground targets. The cannons can take out light vehicles with a good angle, and it gets two bombs with reasonably good yield. And of course, the Tiny Tim rocket, which is amazing if you can actually hit anything with it. My personal preference using this jet for close air support, honestly, is to use the bombs. But if you're good with the rockets, you'll get two shots instead of one, so that might be a good option for you. Visually, I really like the F-3D. To my eyes, it's always looked like a straight-winged A6 intruder, but I know a lot of folks won't care for this jet. And in real life, it had the nickname Willy the Whale, so that's not flattering. Unfortunately, you only get the flat navy blue paint job, and the fleet gray is nowhere to be found. Maybe someday. Landing the F-3D isn't too bad, just remember that its engines are a little underpowered, so keep an eye on the throttle. You can safely drop gear and landing flaps at 300 kilometers an hour, and the plane has an arrestor hook. But keep in mind that it's a little weird, and it doesn't always catch very well if you actually get to do carrier stuff. The cockpit on the plane isn't great. The visibility is obstructed in most directions, and the radar scopes on the right side of the cockpit are non-functional, which is typical for early jets like this with an analog scope. But on the upside, the instruments are mostly in good positions. Overall, I didn't really care for this cockpit. To close out on the Douglas F3D1. This jet has a good radar system, powerful weapons, reasonable agility, it gets an air spawn, and it can do carrier stuff. However, it's a bit underpowered, and it doesn't climb well. Plus, its quantity of air-to-ground weapons is very limited. The final verdict on the F3D1 Sky Knight is that this jet is generally average performing for a multi-role fighter at its BR, and with a little practice, it can do air combat or ground attack competently. Just be aware that it's kind of a jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none situation, and there are better specialized jets at its BR. As always, thanks for watching.